All right, and we are live. It is Friday, and we are in the raw think tank for another awesome community call. This week, we are diving in. Season two is in full effect, and we have so much to talk about. Uh, we have officially revealed our theme for this season and the theme is renewal so it's going to be a raw renewal all season all q2 and just so much in store i'm so excited about this initiative in general um so let's dive right into what kind of initiatives we actually have this season so we can start ironing out some more of those details and actually executing and growing so um to start, I guess let me actually start with the first thing that we sh need to be talking about, which is a timeline. So I'm going to share my screen just for the sake of anybody. You guys can kind of follow along with me, but I'm also recording, so I want you guys to be able to see. So I shared some stuff here, and if you see now, I've kind of been reorganizing the Discord. I even took into consideration Felon's um, advice on putting the ideas text chat closer to our think tank so now you guys see like we have just a little think tank section where we have our voice channel and then our text channel i've done that as well for like the jam sessions so that we actually have like a bot that can um do playlists so anytime we're in anything we can drop songs in there and actually jam in the other one and that's something we can continue to build as we continue to build unlockable content um, that's something that we can really, really, really take advantage of, especially in our like model of um, learn to earn and people earning our governance token. And the question comes to like, well, what does, you know, your governance token allow or your NFTs? Like, what are the utilities behind that? And I really realized, you know, we have so many locked channels in our Discord that I don't even think people realize. But it's really cool, like, as people start unlocking them. Like, even today, I added another locked channel that had just the strategists and the moderators in it together. And it's like the raw content curators, you know, that everybody that's actually creating content just for raw, this is a um, channel just for that. So that would be kind of cool, you know, as people actually onboard and get those roles they'll start seeing more and more channels start unlocking more build tokens they get they can start unlocking and just like you know doing it like that we have one for the collectors and just create continue to create those like fun unlockable content so um in this ideas chat i just dropped this timeline um if you guys are looking at that so here you see this is one from this um one marketplace that just followed me called carbon and this is what they have planned for the rest of the year and going on to next year so i think it would be really really important for us to kind of try to get this established and this is something like what we talked about last um community call like thinking more about the kind of ways that we do want to gauge our growth because you know we're not trying to look at it just um quantitative like oh we have 141 uh members in the discord and we have 300 followers on twitter and you know 11 followers on instagram those are all great numbers to know but i don't think really is a great gauge for what we're looking for when it's like okay how many members are actually active how many members are onboarding how many members are completing tasks how many members are showing up to networking events um and you know just kind of figuring out that kind of gauge and shooting for that kind of engagement rather than the latter of just trying to get a bunch of people in that want to kind of be spectators you know get people in and push them to actually engage so um you know think about those kind of things and also like i just mentioned to you guys before you know we have a lot of stuff that we're building like the metaverse the um website and just so many ideas that when we get this kind of stuff down packed if you haven't been noticing all the headlines that have been on twitter about all these different DAOs and um you know web3 brands that are now getting all these grants it's because it's that season you guys know um very into like cryptocurrency and trying to be ahead of that like curve on what's happening and understanding that vcs are looking for DAOs to help build you know they understand there's a lot of projects out here that are focusing on different 
problems in you know the industry that we're all building and want to help them build so we have a lot of technology that we're building and if we do the kind of things like get our timelines together get our like foundation super set with our um, constitution and our code of conduct and maybe even like um a white paper per se you know a, a lot of the logistics of what goes into actually having a DAO and a future we can get people that believe in that to back it as well which would then make a lot of things a lot easier for example even Jose had um, had to ask the other day you know if there was another way to extract value within raw for him and Zoe because you know they live in Venezuela where the price of living is like maybe half of what it is here in the US but the earning is also the same as well where their min um, you know minimum wage is like two dollars you know so finding ways that we can actually you know again try to earn income into the um dow so that we can pour it back into the community when possible that's just going to be really great you know being able to um support our engineers being able to um pay for you know platforms that we need uh, even for example we all use millinote now you know and that's growing but once you start creating a certain amount of boards that all has prices too like fifty dollars a month a lot of the software we use is like fifty dollars a month a lot of prices just start to um add up so it's like understanding that the more we grow the more expenses are going to come up we want to start putting ourselves in a position where we can also make sure we see the income coming where we have a strategy on having workshops to earn um everybody did basically donate the income earned from our last workshop so our dow has 125 dollars i gotta go um double check i think but something of that nature um and and we can even again go into how we want to start reporting that kind of stuff you know but our i think it was 132 um i don't want to misquote but i think it was like 132 dollars something of that nature but again very exciting you know we we got we had a workshop we got a little money we know oh we want to go buy a domain and all this kind of stuff to get started but the more we grow the more this question is going to start to become more and more relevant so when i seen this um timeline i was just like wow this is exactly a great kind of way where we can like just put some bullets you know what are some of the things we are going to conquer during this season like right now our focus is actually launching our website you know so for this spring season or raw season two we need to get our website launched we need to have our um you know initiative that we're doing now with the marketplace reviews actually reviewing we need to get our metaverse uh, our rec center launched so that our workshop can be in there and so on and so forth and really start kind of looking you know what can we accomplish in these three months what will have to be taken three months after that and what will have to be going into next year which is fine you know i think that's one of the things that a lot of us especially that are just super new and excited want to get in and complete a project in the same day and even myself when i'm like over here working on digital fashion or my avatar i have to remind myself like people take months to complete this kind of work like do not we do not need to stress ourselves trying to get it all accomplished in a day in a week you know but have a timeline have some goals have some deadlines and you know we're doing an awesome job at setting tasks to actually get those done but putting it in a way like this so that others can understand that vision as well is just going to make it very easy to get people on board and excited with this full vision um that we're having so this is something that i'm going to basically be working on this week is actually trying to come up with like a um uh roadmap basically for the this next year so if you guys have ideas this is one of those things you want to be sharing and let me actually take notes um because i'll be dropping all of this in the recap so any ideas for our timeline did anybody have anything that they wanted to share about this timeline or roadmap that i'm showing or things that you guys think we should kind of look at when it comes to that how we could organize what we should include anything anything well like um well i was gonna say um 
with the robot, I guess you have to like start collecting data on the specific like goals, like like uh, I guess it's called OKR or something like that, like like every quarter or every whatever, like yeah, I guess every quarter you collect information and I guess keep track where um the project is going, I guess. Okay, I like that. And you said that's called OKR. Yeah, it's a, it's a, like well, I I guess it's a business term like okay. uh, KPI that stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. That's a good one. And so with that, and that's where I why I even started with that initial idea on what are we looking at to gauge that growth, right? Like we can compare the amount of members joined compared to the amount of members joining a glow team compared to the amount of members that actually complete tasks um and trying to figure out that kind of information so i think that's a good idea as well like you said sergio you know collecting that information at the end of each season um so that we can compare and and, you know create those growth charts these diagrams all this information that's again going to help us so when it comes to that um that's what i'll put here on a task as well as giving some ideas on what we want to be measuring and collecting data for did you have anything else you wanted to add with that yeah well well i uh, well like a couple of days like i was just reading like books on like how to like work in the knowledge econ- economy and um, what I got out of it is just, it's like business should focus on like the operation stuff like like how does like a department operates like it could be differently from I don't know like a creative um, like the way they work like I guess we don't have that like I don't I guess I should be like working on that for like in the engineering team like better you know, on like the operation how we operate in this team engineering team i haven't done that stuff so okay um and i like that you said because we're based on like education that's why we our business should be more focused on like operations oh no it's just uh i like our doubt uh, well i i feel like we don't have like an operation thing like the way we work like i don't know yeah i agree um And that's why one of the things that I've really been working hard with the moderators on is trying to establish that as well. And I've kind of been using a very web two phrase, especially because of of what you just mentioned, just like operating like a business in that sense on actually trying to figure out our SOPs, like our standard operating procedures so that it's like, now when people join and and it worked out really well because it was like i kept pushing them you know let's have a flow when people join the discord a message needs to be sent so that people know this is what you do so now it's great because zay actually got that bot working and if you guys see um in the what is it in the introduce yourself chat so in the introduce yourself chat if you see like this raw bot it sends people this whole long message now and she has shortened it um because we were like you know that's a bit much for people to get at first but again it's like this whole message that talks about what the raw DAO is you know here's the onboarding form here's the five glow teams you can check the task and the task thing and you know do x y and z so um but that's because they had been putting again a a letter together to try to help people understand when you come in this is how it works so we've kind of fine-tuned that letter i'm excited to see somebody else join so i can see like the new updated version that she's um shortened um and then she even follows through so once somebody gets that message and actually introduce themselves then all of us you know welcome them emojis all that great stuff get people excited she also follows up again now with a personal dm that includes a lot more of that other information like you know hey i'm a moderator here in the raw dow if you have any questions you can always reach out to me here's the next step on how to onboard with us and that's why you guys have been seeing a lot more of people joining and then following through to those next steps of actually onboarding 
um, and now just following through, you know, we've kind of created just a little bit of a system in that beginning because now it's like even people fill out the Google form, form. then they get uh, a role that's called a pledge. Once they get that pledge role, now they have access to the locked onboarding chat where we all welcome them, you know, for being a pledge to be one of our core members, you know, let them know here's how you complete the task, here's what's available, ask any questions, we can all kind of talk to any of the pledges there. Once they complete a task, you know, they get their new role. So we've kind of been trying to figure out those, um, you know, just procedures in the beginning and even how to automate them. Um, something I've been trying to do with the task as well. But just like you said, you know, even just organizing that more and actually creating like real SOPs <laughs> for that so that at that point, you know, any moderator can join, can now know this is the flow on onboarding. This is how this will operate. Um, you know, this is how you can update stuff because then, you know, CJ has a, a role where she's actually updating stuff on the get book now, you know, as new members join. CJ's adding them on the get book. Tiny's making a template and um, um, uh, China's putting it on Instagram. So, you know, we're creating a little bit of a flow, you know, when people join to get it rolling and getting them excited and getting them involved. But like you said, uh, Sergio, we definitely want to make sure that's going throughout the entire core team, especially our engineers, because we want more engineers, you know, and I have started seeing a few more following you know especially as i continue to mention like our resource website and developing in the metaverse i've realized a lot of people that started to attract a lot of developers and a lot of people that are now watching so i'm sure you know any minute you know people will be hopping in excited and that's all saying you know having stuff like that roadmap so that people understand the vision uh and how they can contribute i think is going to be our best friend on getting us some more core members that you know have some more skills that they're willing to actually come and contribute to building out this vision if they can see it clearly as well and i think having those sops is important um I just have a question. Is, is the procedures like documented? It's not documented. Um, so like, yeah. Say like a new, um, okay. But we so I was will. gonna say like if you had like a new um, um, a new one, so they could like under like read the documentation. On that's true. The yeah. Procedures. So that's what we'll do too. I'll put that on a need or a to do list. So. We actually need to create SOPs for those. Because I think most people that are from, like, the Web 2 traditional, like, c corporate world, I want to say, most people know what a SOP is. So they know that's, like, an outline for this is what it is and this is how you do it. So creating more of those for all of our little things I think would definitely be helpful and can get accomplished. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Tiny. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say we can start um like a Mila note again, <laughs> another Mila note for um and just start all of our putting all of our stuff in there. Cause then the, once people come in, then we can always just like invite them to that, and that way they can see like straight across like how everything operates. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. We can definitely use that, um, especially because a lot of the stuff will be um, not the same, but very similar, you know, so we can all share our ideas there and then create a more like formal word document so that like in our yeah. brain, we can just have a folder that's like SOPs and then you can go in there and it can go like how to you know, create core teams, how to create core team NFT contribution NFTs, how to, you know, onboard new members, how to welcome new members, how to, um, you know, do a lot of these different steps that we're doing, which will be great anyways, because these are the kind of things that will be great to pass on for other people that are coming because they want to build DAOs or, you know, are looking for the resources that we're creating in general. Perfect. I can um I can probably start that and start inviting people. <laughs> okay, okay, that sounds awesome. So that sounds like a plan. Awesome, awesome suggestion there, Sergio, on getting the operation. Definitely something we gotta get done. Um, cool. 
So, did you guys have anything else or any other ideas about the timeline? Um, anything specific you think would be accomplished this season, accomplished next season? Um, maybe uh, everybody could have like a homework assignment on, you know, something they think could be completed this season or Q2, Q3, Q4, you know, so that we can kind of compile a big list. Well, my, my is like, just have that website launch, like have that domain, have, I guess like hello world blog post and nice, yeah. on the website of okay. this quarter. Yeah. Domain name and launch. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that would be great. Domain name and website launch. So, and also Sergi, I'm not sure if you've seen, but um, Tiny actually knows how to do some of that front end for WordPress. So she has been working on that a bit, and she shared it somewhere, I think, in the engineer's chat. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. So, so yeah, luckily we have Tiny that knows front end, so we can definitely start putting some more ideas together. Um, I was thinking of, you know, finding some more, like, futuristic, like, backgrounds. I know when we were kind of, like, going from the elements that everybody had kind of pulled from, um, just that appearance and it looking more like, web three ish was our biggest thing and um one thing i learned from trying to create a marketplace with figma was it's actually kind of easier to do that because it's just you know putting a background that that looks like that and a picture that is kind of 3d or animated and stuff like that so um we can make that our mission to you know try to get some good images to actually create that um nice visual appearance as well or sprinkle that in there so awesome. Okay, great. Good plan. Sergio, I see you unmuted. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, no. Okay. No worries. Just wanted to make sure before we uh, kept it moving. So that sounds like a really great um, idea. We have our timeline. I'm still going to put out the task for everybody to say something that they think can be accomplished for each of the next three quarters, including the one we're in now, so that, you know, next week when we come together again, um, I should have more of like um, a draft of the timeline, and then I can show you all, and then we can finalize it from there. So that will be the plan with that. Um, so cool. So moving right along, we need to get on to our big initiative as well, which is when it comes to our theme. So we only have two more things on the agenda, which is this initiative and then our recap. Um, and I guess also the rec center, but we know enough about that kind of. So the um, actual marketplace reviews, very exciting. Again, one of those things when I tell people like that's the mission, they get very excited, um, especially because a lot of people have that question. And then when you tell them that that's what we're doing, they start to realize there's nobody else that does this. Um, or even, you know, when I shared that and then Musashi's like, you know, he's made a marketplace and it's like, cool, we have something that we can review your marketplace so that now you can offer that feedback to others that are like, hey, I don't know about this marketplace. And it's like, well, you know, Raw Dow reviewed it and here's the grade it got. So I can go back, I guess, to share my screen a bit. If you guys are following along on the screen, that's cool. If not, I'm just in the chat, so you can follow along in the chat as well. But this is in, this is in the ideas chat as well, actually. I'm thinking, yes, it is. So in the ideas chat, I shared this um, note that I basically, basically created thinking of this initiative, right? When we're creating these reviews for the consumers report and in this idea chat i did also drop a link to the consumers report um since sergio had kind of mentioned that initially and that's what we've kind of been monikering ourselves after in order to build something up of that nature so um on there some of the things i i've seen is that they call their thing a scorecard right so people can go and fill out scorecards about different products so we can have artists use a raw scorecard to offer feedback. Their score will come to um, a final of a percent, and we can put that in grade form as well. 
So say we have like 10 questions and each are scored on a um, scale from one to 10. So, you know, each question is obviously worth 10 points as well. Whatever number they land on, that's how many points they get for that question. Um, and then we can piggyback off of that final percent score by also giving it a grade, which I think will make it very like enticing again for marketplaces to even want to work with us and say, hey, we want raw DAO artists to come and mint on our marketplace and give us a grade so that we can go and show other artists that this is the grade we've received. And we can even make kind of like a cool logo. I was thinking maybe we can like kind of keep this like Apple thing that we have around it and it can be like grade A, grade B, grade C, grade D, grade F and kind of like stamp people or offer like some type of like certificate to marketplaces once we've kind of like given a review um, and it can always go up or down you know kind of like even thinking about like how food places do that and you know they go crazy like trying to get their grade up because people care about that you know you could put it in your window and, and when you do have that grade a you know it becomes an accomplishment so i think kind of you know using that score to make people want that good grade from the raw dow is something that will be appealing to the marketplaces as well um and then i kind of dropped 10 questions that I was thinking since I hadn't gotten too much other feedback or suggestions from too many others. Um, I organized in three different ways, which would be if it's user friendly, if it's buyer friendly and general. And with those two things, our first two sections again can be average. Like what's the average of it being user friendly? What's the average of it being buyer friendly? And then, you know, generally what's it all, all overall? So for user friendly, is it easy to navigate? Is it easy to upload? And is it easy to advertise? I think as NFT artists, these are some of those main things that we have to conquer when going on these different marketplaces, you know? You know, when you got on there, was it easy to see how to mint and actually go through that process? Was it easy to now go and show, you know, this marketplace and your NFT in spaces and telling people about it? Um, and then when it comes to the buyer side, will it be easy to buy this NFT or are you confused with how to actually swap into different cryptocurrencies or how to actually go find it? Um, is it easy to find buyers? You know, some people, if you're using, um, but Tezos, you know, for your NFTs, maybe it's not as easy to find nft buyers that buy nfts on tezos you know maybe you find that is a deterrence to some so how easy is it actually to find buyers um does that marketplace have high traffic you know look based on what you see on their um twitter on there you know if a lot of other nft artists are sharing if a lot of other nft artists are using getting bought out or vice versa um, cause that's definitely something, you know, that should be considered and then moving into the general, um, because a lot of new marketplaces are new, you know, so we don't want to just kind of be knocking these newer marketplaces because of things like they don't have high traffic yet, because maybe they don't have high traffic, but they have such a close knit community that if you upload on their marketplace, it's getting bought up instantly. You know, different marketplaces is, will have different advantages if they know what they're doing. So are they growing in the space? You know, do people feel confident? Do you see their, their, they have this community behind them? Is it easy to learn and explain? Um, because if you're putting your NFT on there, one thing we all learn coming from DigitalX is it was a little complicated to explain and get people that's not already in that ecosystem to understand the ecosystem and actually take a step and be a part of so is that easy to for you to learn and is it is it easy for you to explain to your buyers and for other nft artists um is it trustworthy you know or do you see a bunch of iffy things on their website and iffy things in their discord and iffy things on their twitter you know that make you want to question if this is something that you want to continue with and put your buyers in that space to actually go and connect wallets and buy nfts with um, and will you use it again? Um, and then any extra notes that people can add, um, you know, some, something like that. So I thought kind of 
um, sectioning it like that and having these general questions is was closely matched to how the consumer report had kind of had it with like their broad questions and then just having people be able to offer any feedback you know they can comment under any question if they like so that people can you know get again just a, a bunch of different perspectives basically so that is what i have so far for that um so do you guys have any suggestions for the questions how we can organize it the biggest thing is also we need to come up with like a name for this initiative right like what what is this <laughs> well like what's well, the marketplace reviews like the raw marketplace reviews the um, raw consumer reports the raw producer reports something that's like catchy that people understand what we're doing and that we can kind of start sharing you know telling people hey come fill out the blah 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 <laughs> um and here's how you can do it because once we have that then the next part is easy it's just a matter of creating a, a google form and a place for people to access it and then a, a you know a way that we'll actually start displaying that information and eventually when our website is live you know we'll be directing people to go to the website to fill out the form or at that point if you have a whole website maybe we don't even need a google form you know maybe it will be a way where we could just put the questions right on the website and then it'll just show the results you know right right that way but google form does it just the same as well we have to kind of step by step that um but even again if it's just going to the website getting the google form having you know the results displayed on that and i know even last community call again we talked about creating that process for publishing content on the website so that's definitely still something on the to-do list but this is one of those things that again is going to kind of be on the website and one of the things we're pushing people to go to the website for like go to the website to offer your feedback go to the website to check other marketplaces and see what other users have said about that marketplace um so thoughts questions concerns about that about the list that i've shared about questions i've come up with about how to organize it with the grading the percentage the point values um i plus here like another example of like this kind of like recommendation resource um in the ideas channel okay, um it's rotten tomato um it's basically kind of like um well like it has like it rates movies yes but also like the audience of the movies go rate um the movie if they like it or not and they also have like their own i guess like in-house critics that reviews movies i guess that could be like another like idea we could have like two types of like review i guess critics like one like the the realm that like the core members um review i guess like uh, NFT marketplace and then I guess our user or like user of the website could log in and and then I guess like review the um, NFT marketplace so like there's two okay kind of I like that two type of reviewers raw artists and then like general artists Okay, yeah, and yeah. I'm over here looking at Rotten Tomato as well. I can um, share my screen just in case you guys want to follow along with me. I know I'm, again, just recording everything for the sake of our recording. Um, but yeah, really cool. I like how they have even, just how they have it organized here, you know, with the picture in the middle of like a little trailer where you can kind of see it, a final percent for the, it says the tomato meter and the audience score. So, you know, again, having stuff like that, I was even thinking that too, like, oh, it can be kind of cool if we can figure out how to like create a fun, like way to like gauge it or how they called it like a tomato meter. Um, so fun names to gauge it. Um, and that's why I was even like a raw score, like, you know, some, a lot of little like fun ways that we can actually like call this to get people excited to be like, oh man. 
I don't want to be a rotten tomato, <laughs> you know? And I even like how um, this one that got 29%, it looks like a tomato that's kind of like splat. Like they really threw it at you. Because um, we can do fun stuff like that too, you know? And then the audience score, they have uh, popcorn and they both got to do that. Shows how many reviews you can actually click on that. And then most importantly, um, I like how they even, again, went into more information about it, the directors, the languages, where to find it, just giving still more of that <clears throat> general information, the cast and crew, um, so that we can still be that, you know, point of resource. Like, we're going to review it, but here's the founders. Here's when it was founded. Here's who backs it. You know, just offering a little bit more about that marketplace so that um, people wanting to know about that marketplace again have a place to go to find out that kind of stuff um, and then under that here you can just see all the bubbles uh, on people you know having their big um, statements you know and I like how it says cryptic reviews for the bubble here's audience reviews quotes um, and then yeah it's organized very nice I do like the way this is organized um, Sergio so thanks for sharing Cool. So yes, so that that's cool. Well, and that's exactly what I was exactly saying. Like we have to figure out how to organize this. Like we got to come up with some fun like names. Like what is this thing called? So then we can kind of come up with the fun names under it um, and start pushing it. You know, start getting people wanting to give the score and give their feedback and be a part of it. You know, every marketplace that they're a part of. Even when I had mentioned, you know, Jevils before, we know a bunch of people that have used Jevils before, you know. So we have our raw artist, like you said, Tiny, who's about to be using it. And then there's a bunch of people who haven't. We are all closely work um, closely with the Jevils people. So then it'd be nothing to say, hey, we're offering the service to actually, you know, get some feedback for Jevils. So here's a form that everybody here that's, you know, either bought on Jevils. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's that's another one that we can do too, Sergio. When you said do it into two um, groups, maybe we can have one for the buyers and one for the mentors. So that also buyers on those marketplaces can offer their feedback. That would be good too. Okay, yeah, yeah. So maybe buyers and mentors, those can be the two type of reviewers for each marketplace. What, what do you think about that? Thumbs up? Let me see, I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, no worries, no pressure. Just keep thinking, oh. Oh, that's off. Oh, that's off good. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so buyers and mentors. So yeah, that'd be cool then. So that way, um, you know, the mentors can offer that same feedback and we can just organize it that way. So cool. Okay, so we still need to still come up though with like a concept starting with like a name for the initiative. That's what I just keep calling it. The initiative to review um, marketplaces. But coming up with like a, a name that we can start putting out in the world to let people know that's what we're doing um and then some fun names under that that we can do and i think rotten tomato was a great way to do that so um my creative juices don't really flow though as i'm talking it's more like after we get off the call when i'm thinking about it that's when they all go crazy and i also know zay said she couldn't attend this call but i know that's that'd be like her her spot right there she's very creative when it comes to this kind of stuff so we will put this just on the ideas list again. Um, you know, we <laughs> I kind of created this um, a second list. You know, we all put out like our task available, but I also have like a list of ideas that everybody can add to throughout the week. Um, so because we have this ideas chat so close, I thought it was kind of cool to add to that as well, you know, so that we can start trying to get the community sharing ideas more, even if they can't make our community call on Fridays, we can still start to include their feedback and their ideas um, if they know what we're looking for. So, um, names for initiative. Okay, cool. All right. Any last thoughts, questions, concerns for the 
reviews i would love to get that started like asap honestly um that way people can actually start pushing to mint nfts and offer that feedback um one thing i would really like to start doing i guess to kind of like pace it out would be now starting to tell people this is our theme go mint nfts and then by the end of the month come back and fill out this form about that marketplace you use because now you've had some time to kind of you know see if it's gotten bought you know hear some feedback maybe from your buyers and get kind of a good gauge of it um so kind of just having that um kind of figured out by then kind of thing but getting people to actually start minting nfts using the theme we can start pushing that now creating content like the theme is raw renewal go mint nfts um and then you know start letting people know okay now let's add the review you know and this is where you can actually access it and um to start out we again can put that google form just here in our discord where i can make another section just for that um we can put it in our weekly recap we can do a whole lot of different things to just continue to build up to that while we're collecting data um and i think it's cool also because it puts us in like this beta stage um of actually what we're doing which is cool to be able to say like yeah we're in beta of collecting this information um figuring out what questions work figuring out how we want to organize this so that we can hit this in a scaled way you know because there's so many nft artists and just like when i was um in our twitter space on wednesday i was telling them like i used to be write a lot of poetry on social media and me and um one girl that was like actually in like my little book club group that i have to the side that you guys i share with sometimes um her and i would actually pick a theme each friday and post on social media on my ig page and people would comment under like a freestyle using that word for the theme that we picked and it would be like really really popular like the minimum kind of comments we got was like a hundred comments like minimum and that's on a slow day but on the usual it was like 200 comments and not even just that but what made it really cool is that other poets started commenting on to other poets comments and then like you start seeing everybody following everybody and everybody being excited for you know the next theme and stuff so it's like and we got that idea because think there were so many other poetry like pages on instagram that were just about like hey this is a theme write to this theme and write about this and write about that and again you see how that just boosts engagement so thinking about how we are in this whole nft space and again there's nothing really like that there's nothing that brings the whole space together you know so something as simple as a theme that says hey the theme's renewal interpret it with it however you want and make an nft to it and how that can be so cool um especially now one thing i've been even reminding people about our hashtag if you go on twitter and press hashtag raw blackout it's beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful you see behind the scenes you see different artists you see nfts you see so much from just using that hashtag of raw blackout our first theme and you could do the same with hashtag raw season one just from us using that hashtag when we were at the um fashion show preparing for that content and like actually encouraging people to use the hashtag and add content to it it turned out so amazing so again imagine how we can tackle the entire nft community and get them to start using you know common themes common hashtags and building together um will be very exciting so i don't want to harp on that too much but just want to motivate you guys to like you know we can super scale like say the right nft artist uses our theme and then other nft artists want to use the theme like it really can happen in the blink of an eye so um super exciting it, it makes me super excited just thinking about that kind of stuff um but last request for any questions thoughts or concerns on that one nope all right no problem so moving right along to our last things i don't again want to keep us too too long um well two two last things 
um one thing really quick our metaverse so exciting um i love how we started this clubs initiative last week and the clubs have been rolling and it's so great to be able to say like we are all about education here we're having workshops here's the resources we're collecting this is what we're about education we're into networking join a club that interests you we're actually having network events where we're actually coming together and networking um and we're going physical to digital so we're back to actually pushing people to drop nfts um all of our twitter spaces this month are kind of aligned to help nft artists get started so um next week we have uh elizabeth a who will be talking about storytelling and actually go over like um, storytelling and how NFT artists need to consider that as they're creating that NFT that they're about to mint. Um, and then the week after that will be about community building. I did reach out to one of the bigger NFT artists, uh, NFT artists that I, I kind of know, but kind of from a distance. So, but she's like really popping. So it'd be kind of hard to like actually catch her. Like her DMs are closed everywhere except for instagram <laughs> so i did shoot my shot there to see if we can have her come in talk about community building the second week and then the last week would be like the different blockchains um trying to get somebody that has some expertise on you know using nfts on tezos using nfts on solana using nfts on um ethereum polygon shoot even xrpl i told you i'm gonna get my nfts on xrpl and every day i come on and i see one of these other big brands mention their nfts on the xrpl and i'm like i've been telling everybody that's where we need to be at um but neither here nor there um you know again just trying to find somebody that knows the intricacies on the different blockchains their pros and cons maybe have some experience minting on them already um, so I'm still digging around for that, but that's the idea, you know, making sure our workshops are still cohesive um, and trying to build some more traction in those Twitter spaces and just all the different things that we're doing. Welcome, Zay. Happy to have you here. Um, this has been recorded. Ha um, is it finished recording yet or no? No, we're not done recording yet. Okay, that's good. That's fine. I just wanted to know. I'm going to still uh, listen to the playback. I'm sorry yes. for being so late. No, it's okay. It's okay. I already um, kind of fair warned them. But I was over here like, yes, Zay going to hear this and she going to come back with them ideas. Because uh, something that we've kind of started to do is I'm taking two lists right now. One for the task, kind of like a to-do list, like what needs to be done. Um, as well as a ideas list so that I can share the, this list of idea questions that we have in the ideas chat and anybody can offer, you know, their, their feedback on ideas just because they missed the call. We don't want to miss their input as well. So um, definitely I've been keeping track on different ways you can come back and add to that. Um, let me see. So yes, yeah, so the metaverse, um, very exciting. We're going to be building in that this Saturday. A lot of people are very excited to be a part of the building club and getting in the metaverse and building together. Um, just one thing to kind of put into perspective on what this rec center is going to look like, because again, this is kind of those ideas that we have to come up together to um, come up with. But the main thing that I kind of want us to keep in mind is kind of like a museum. Like um, if you guys have watched the replay from when we were actually in the metaverse the first time or like Zay, I know you and I were in there together. The best part about being in there was being able to walk into the different rooms and look at the stuff, you know, so creating this like museum like feeling in our rec center so that when people come in, there's a lot to see, there's a lot to do, there's a lot to explore, and we are offering those resources. So kind of the concept with it um if i haven't said it a hundred times this is my hundred and one time um but you know i'm gonna keep keep saying it until it's actually built into fruition so the idea um i'm thinking as a vision of it is kind of like a old school school you know old school university like back in like 
the Greek days, you know, where it would be like kind of like outside and you would have to be kind of like an apprentice almost, you know, and it's like um, almost kind of like a, a garden, not even garden, but like pillars and like, you know, this like outside vibe where it's like that's the main area and then you have like, like an arena yes exactly like okay. an arena that's a, a perfect way to put it exactly like an arena so you have that middle um in the middle and we can have the bleachers all around because that main arena is what we can start renting out to other people to use we have one guy that just joined um studio lindheim very excited about what we're doing he's doing his own initiative by um going into like the rainforest in brazil and trying to bridge um you know people in their cultures into blockchain and also trying to create this like metaverse experience of um the rainforest and being able to experience it but yesterday when we were on twitter spaces he was most excited with us about having different language speaking teachers and autonomous translators and having you know different teachers within that um what metaverse having different teaching sessions in different languages and being able to come into our metaverse and have those resources and be able to do that so um that's what we want to be able to provide and also mention you know people being able to rent it and it's like yeah that's why initially we, we called it a conference center because although we can have our workshops there there's plenty of other people that are not going to have a metaverse or have no idea how to set that up and we can be there to offer a resource on here's our metaverse that you can come and host stuff in here's even some uh, moderators and some engineers and some strategists that can help you put your event together and we can help you work it out and have a have a good event you know we can kind of build it up to something like that but the really cool part um, aside from the arena comes from the different aisles that you can kind of have from that so like we can have like a um I guess they would call it like a sorority row almost right off of that where it's like a path and then we can have a room for each one of the core teams we can have a room for each one of the clubs um then we can have another you know alley where it's like this is all the artists nft artists and every nft artist can create their own galleries and blender this is the cool thing all of the all of the environments are created by one individual in blender so that you can create that and you know bring it into this world so now we can tell any artist that actually uses our theme you can create a gallery and put it into our world you know if you are a raw artist and adding to that um, and then we can also have one big gallery that's just for the theme so that anybody that actually drops an NFT with the theme can be featured in that gallery. Um, so that would be, again, another utility that we're giving people like, you know, use the theme. And now we're about to try to offer that extra promotion that we had kind of started talking about as well that we can start bringing into the website in the future so you know just laying those kind of blocks on how we can start leading up to that and getting people used to that um and those kind of things um so you know like i said so we have our sorority row with our core teams and with our clubs and then we have our nft artist row and then we can have our row for classrooms where every teacher can have their own classroom you know and anytime they're having meetings they can go and meet in their classroom one thing I think is going to be so, so, so amazing when it comes to this, say, for example, in our uh, sorority row, right, where we have our clubs as well, and we have, like, the gaming club. Think about how cool it's going to be to have the gaming club there. Think, check this out. I'm not sure if you guys have been hearing a lot more of this hype building up around Twitch and how Twitch is becoming this new like hot word you know everybody's on twitch and now they're even starting to push like no you can do anything on twitch you can do anything on twitch so a lot of youtubers and a lot of influencers are all starting to start migrating to twitch so imagine if we as the raw dow that has this awesome rec center can now offer twitch streamers to come and stream their twitch in our gaming club right because now they've got this whole environment that we built and maybe it has like 
cool bean bags and like <laughs> you know it looks like it has like a bar and like I don't know it just looks like this like epic gaming arcade type of like area and now anybody that's gaming can come stream it in twitch and tell all of their viewers to go into the metaverse and watch it there so now this is again creating that networking effect where it's like this twitch streamer can offer that to their community and say yeah you can meet me in the gaming club and now all the viewers are actually in the metaverse together viewing and watching your twitch live stream together Tiny, I see you've unmuted. Oh, I was going to say, what if we modeled our metaverse like a college campus? Because I was just thinking about my campus, like, because uh, I went to Temple, like, you know, at the center we had the bell tower. That's, like, where all the social shit popped off. It was, like, a big outside area. Then, you know, you have, like, the, the all the different centers, the rec center, the student center, the all the different yeah. buildings for all the different things, you know. And then you had, like, the art, the art section where all, like, the art kids used to hang out and, like, all that kind of stuff. So I think that would be cool because then that gives you like all the possibility. You can just put yeah. everything there, but just model it after like uh, campus, basically. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot, and that's a um, better way to exactly phrase what I was thinking, anyways. Um, and like you said, we've all kind of seen college campuses, anyways. So being able to kind of you know mo model ourselves after that and be able to include the different houses and different halls and all the little different things like that i think that would be pretty cool so i like that i like that a lot anybody else have any thoughts about the rec center um we do have our first session tomorrow with musashi um we will be starting at ground zero and he will be showing us how to actually build in there because although you can build in blender there is also a way that you can actually use like a developer tool that they have in neos and build in there as well so that would be kind of cool one thing i am going to ask is that everybody picks a club and designs the room for their club um, so I, I didn't want to kind of put that out too soon, but hold on, mommy's on the phone. Mommy's on the phone, so go sit in your room, okay? Love you. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so yes, we have a lot of clubs and a lot of rooms that need to be built for our bases. So like even um, our core teams, you know, like I just said, we would want one for each core team. Yeah. We would want like a little room or a hall for each one of our clubs, um, you know, and being able to give the community a chance to build something for the core that we will all be kind of looking at. So something I'm going to be challenging people to do in, in our team is build one of the halls for one of these core elements of raw. And um, if you feel comfortable after that, then build your own gallery from there. Um, but let's get started with those core elements and then build from there. I think um, when we were actually in the metaverse the first time, Acapella, um, who built that whole like auditorium we were in before, uh, they said, you know, there's some pretty good YouTube videos that you can just watch and like get stuff built in like a weekend. So I don't think um, any of this stuff will take too, too, too long, especially, like I said, if we get the, these first parts done of like building out our core elements for raw, then you, we will have a little more skills and start getting a little more creative when it comes to actually building out our own personal little galleries that we would like to kind of put in there. Um, but that, that was an idea that I had as well when it came to like actually building out the uh, metaverse and being able to have like one person create one thing that's kind of like a core element of it um because you know you always get like a different version a different perspective i think it always comes out really cool that way um so anybody have any last question calls any questions thoughts or concerns about the metaverse well i just have like one comment about the metaverse um sure I realized, like, sure. well, like, advertisement inside, like, our own, like, like you say, like, our own little room, like, for the engineer, like, is it possible, like, let's say Hard Hat wants to, like, put a, put a advertisement in there, is yeah. that allowed? Yeah, it is possible, and it's actually really easy to do. 
Um, because you can import anything. You can import JPEGs. You can import um, live stream links. You can import like videos. You can import um, 3D objects. You can literally import anything. Um, so that would definitely be an option. And I that was one of the things that I was thinking was going to be really cool as well when it came to being able to rent out the rec center so that other people can kind of like use it. Because when they have all of their people there using it, it's like if we have all of our other core elements still around it, one, that's natural advertisement for all of us that's there. Because again, the people are going to want to go exploring. So, you know, they'll end up looking in your gallery and looking at your NFTs and looking at our core, um, you know, galleries and our core elements that we kind of have there that are going to be talking about the different things that we have going on. But also being able to offer that for others, you know, other marketplaces that we are kind of working with, or like you said, hard hat and just different things and being able to offer that. Um, Cause that's, that's something that I had even mentioned when it was like, why we are going into the metaverse with our rec center to have like all these workshops is because although, you know, it's great to be able to meet on discord and it's great to be able to meet on Twitter and on zoom and all these different digital ways, it does take away from a certain element. You know, I'm used to going to workshops and being able to walk around and look at the booths and touch the booths and talk to the people in between, um, you know, workshops and be able to ask questions and, you know, explore the conference centers. And, you know, it's like a whole thing when you go to a conference, uh, you know, there's sponsorships and being able to have booths again and being able to see just so many different things. So us actually creating that rec center, it brings back all of that, you know, where we can offer those, Hey, you could buy a table, you know, anytime people are having these conferences, you pay for a table, you pay for a booth because you're now about to have that sponsorship for these big events that are happening. So, um, not only are we going to be able to do that, but we're going to be able to be that example to show all these others. This is how you can do that. You know, cause even, you know, us coming from, digital X, you know, that's not something they were able to do with their digital fashion shows. So it's like, they're still either in physical or digital where we are kind of in that perfect middle that we do so well, that physical to digital, where it's like, you know, we are bringing in a lot of those elements that make this fusion so beautiful <laughs> in my opinion. So definitely a great point though, um, Sergio to talk about the advertising because that's going to be big. I never want you guys to think, one, what we're doing is all about the money, or two, what we're doing is not about the money, because neither of those is um, true, you know, but it's one of those things that we have to think about the finances, because we are operating as so. We know that even using NEOs, you know, we only get one gigabyte free, and then eventually we'll have to start paying for storage. So for us to not be working in a backwards manner, we have to just create avenues so that it can start to take care of itself. Um, I know I was just telling Sergio about this one group called Learn Web 3 DAO. This is um, one that I've kind of just been into. And you know what? I'm going to invite you both here. I guess I could have just dropped the link, but it's, it's just going to be easier for me here. So Tiny and Zay, I'm going to send you both invites to see this new um chat that i've actually been looking in and this is what i've been using to kind of try to start learning like coding um or not even coding but like solidity smart writing smart contracts um building this like dap they are really really awesome at how they've organized it with like freshmen sophomores juniors and things of that nature but i bring them up because they just raised eighty thousand dollars in grants why? Because they give so much information for free. Their whole thing is free. You can go through every single section for free, watch all their workshops. You know, they have, they, they basically are like a group of developers who have pre recorded, you know, 
lessons and dropped a bunch of articles and um kind of organized this so that it's like you can go through each step create a project and then come in the discord and actually go in the dev help section and ask for help if you get stuck on any of those steps um and because they do everything for free again they've put themselves in a position where they can still earn a living and still earn by going to grants and being an answer to these questions that people are having so um and that's why i even mentioned the grants a lot as well because we don't want to just you know be looking at our community to fund everything you know we are in the nft space we are going into this um internet of like value where things are going to just cost to use the internet that's true but we don't want that to be a reason why people can't um learn or can't be a part you know so we don't want that that burden to just be on them um so that was just a cool way to kind of show us all you know if we put ourselves in these positions that's where we can look for we can look for those people that want to pay for advertising you know i have a close relationship with bancor and i know when we again had that last um fashion show the physical fashion show for digital x they was charging ten thousand dollars to be sponsors for that physical um show and bancor was happy to be able to support that idea because bancor is one of those again that has people within the community that want to actually support different communities so it's as simple as you know just having these things set up and in line and avenues for these vcs to actually come and support um, our mission so great point there Sergio on the advertising and keeping that um, in the forefront you know as we're creating our metaverse and understanding that that's a mission of it a big mission of it as well um, any other question thoughts or concerns I see um, tiny has shared a picture of the bell tire at tempo oh yeah that's really nice I like that and we can look at a bunch of different universities you know and pick you know some layouts and kind of start to mimic that because again we're about to start building tomorrow you know and so even how you have that tiny i like how it has like you said that common area and this like temple in the middle because that's something like i was imagining when i even said like like kind of like a garden because like you said at a university there's that big outside area you know and then you walk different ways to get to different things like oh you about to go on the science you know area or the athletic area or the um dorm area you know it's like each wing of a campus be kind of for a different thing so even here how you have this picture you know there's like two different paths that can lead to two different things so it could be something just as simple if that common area there four little paths that lead you you know this is going to that this is going to that this is going to that and so on and so forth but um good idea i'm putting that on the task or ideas list for everybody to look at university ideas share those so that we start having more of a good visual for how we would like to build out the metaverse cool thanks for sharing all right I, oh go ahead oh i'm sorry um, I just have a question about, uh, did you ever find out from Musashi how we um, can import our avatars tomorrow? No, I did not. Thank you for reminding me. I okay. definitely need to ask him. I know that it shouldn't be hard, though, because he said you can do anything. So I know it's just going to come down to the way that we export it. So I need to ask him, like, the details for what, like, it should be exported as so that it can then be imported easy tomorrow that'll be ha that'll be one of the first things we'll all have to kind of do together is how to import an avatar you know since that's one of our key selling things is telling people they can bring in their own avatars there is a downside though that i have come across with neos which i'm so sad about i have joined their discord and officially there is no way for mac users to use it it is not compatible with Mac. So. At all? That's crazy. I know. I know. It is It is pretty crazy. Um, it is pretty sad to hear that. Um, but the way I looked at it is I know Musashi and the Mullock build team that we've been working with, they are building in there. And it's, you know, there's plenty of metaverses. So this is at least a good one that we can all start in. Um, you know, just like universities, especially because that's one of the things we'll be modeling ourselves after. They have c 
campuses all over you know even if like i'm from maryland so you know there's the university of maryland then there's the university of maryland that has like the um different branches you know i can't i spent so long i can't even think about the different branches but you know they they have like different sub sections of that university in different like cities basically so you know we can have our raw rec center in neos we can have our raw rec center on the xrpl we can have our raw rec center in decentraland you know we can start taking our raw rec center and putting it in different places and that's why one of the things i've been really emphasizing is creating your environment in blender and then importing it into there so that that environment you create is a real asset that we can add to the raw DAO that we can recreate and import anywhere uh, in different kind of versions of it. So good question though, Zay, because I definitely forgot to remind. And in the beginning, again, even with um, using Neos, it will be okay because that's how we will get half of our audience, right? Um, one thing we will be doing is streaming it on Twitch tomorrow. So um, that's why I was saying even, you know, tackling that Twitch streaming economy and showing them, hey, come tell all your viewers to watch you stream here together. And I think that would be really fun. Like, for example, one of our newest DAO, DAO members, Shamgar, he streams a lot. So imagine if we told him, you know, whenever you're streaming just you know put the link in the metaverse and we can all go watch him stream in the metaverse you know and then all his other viewers can be in there too and then you know the party can kind of keep growing from there so uh, that's kind of the way i looked at it is at least our, our mac users will give us that viewership in the meantime while we build up our twitch um, can work the VIP section for our viewers anyways um, and keep the comments going and kind of just work that angle in the meantime. So anything else before we move on to our very, very last topic that is going to be even quicker? <laughs> no? Okay, so last thing on the agenda, um, we've talked about, let me see, what have we even talked about today? We've done talked about a lot. We've talked about our reviews we've talked about our website we've talked about our timeline we've talked about the metaverse last thing is the recaps so super exciting um the raw recaps is something we're going to keep dropping every single friday um if you guys haven't been reading them you know please do so that way you can offer me some feedback if you think i should be adding anything um i try to add less is more so a little less reading a little more like quick bullets, quick references. I try to basically take resources that people have shared within our Discord and just copy links in there, articles, tweets, anything like that, outlining our tasks that we outline, highlighting things we've done, like sharing our YouTube recording for this meeting, um, our Twitter spaces replay, um, highlighting our new members that have actually joined the DAO, if you guys have seen one thing tiny has done is actually made like a little bio template for each new member that will be sharing on social medias and now as new members come and we create that that's what i'll also be sharing on the um recap as well so but what is really really exciting that we're just adding in there that tiny has um that came up with this awesome idea is we are going to be kind of going back to that um you guys remember when we kind of were looking at the website as more like a magazine and we came up with some like really cool unlockables that we could have in this magazine now although our website has blossomed into something even more magical we still have all these fun little ideas like comics using nfts and other unlockables that we can start putting out there so drum roll tiny has been making crossword puzzles right how much fun everybody loves crossword puzzles <laughs> everybody loves looking into the newspaper for the crossword puzzles <laughs> it's funny sergio was like i'm out <laughs> just kidding i know he probably had to go or something but yes crossword puzzles so fun 
Um, so she has made the first crossword puzzle, um, and we're going to start including that in these raw recaps. Um, and with these crossword puzzles, they're basically going to be a review of words and definitions from that week. So that's kind of how we're going to like come up with the theme for, you know, that crossword puzzle and those kind of questions that we'll be able to get from that. And then the first 10 people who complete the crossword puzzle will actually get a po-op that she'll be completing and distributing at that time as well. So, um, and it's really fun. One thing also as well is you, you don't see the answers to the crossword puzzle. So something we're going to do is like, the following Friday we'll have the answer sheet from the last week as well as the new crossword so that'll be kind of fun again to get people excited about get you know checking the new recap to see the answers for things that they miss to get the new um, crossword puzzle she also was doing like um, word searches you can find all kind of little fun games I know my son loves word searches so I was over here like I'm gonna have him do the word search and then we're like yes we can even you know do kid versions um, because you know that's how we can get our kids involved like you know here's a lesson that you can now give to your kid um, in order to kind of keep them learning as well with you and then even unlock, again, the comics, you know, put it out there to people like, hey, you can mint a comic that can go with this recap. Because um, the cool thing about the recaps is I dropped them on mirror.xyz. So really, any of them can be turned into an NFT if we decide to make the recaps as NFTs or as... Um, um, anything that we include on there could be NFTs. So one thing I said, like, say somebody makes a comic, you know, I would want that comic to be sold as an NFT so that one, the artist that contributed it can earn. And then also our DAO can earn as well. One thing that, um, we did for the global designer network is all of us were writing like our own letters or our own like weekly threads for them. But say anybody like, say I did include like, oh, I'm selling NFTs on here. Or you can even do just like general fundraising and like have a link and anybody can just like add funds to it. You can do a whole bunch of different things like that on Mirror. And they always had like 30% of the whatever it was made would go to the treasury. So, you know, once we start unlocking these, again, different value layers, that's how we'll be able to start getting this income, you know, where it's like, we don't have to just keep going back to the same community, like here, give us more money, give us more mo money, give us more money. No, we can organize ourselves and get this big money from grants and start making big moves you know we can start dropping nfts and become incredible nft artists so as we drop nfts they are selling and we're able to continue to pour into the community we can start putting ourselves just in position to actually earn um with the different things that we're doing in different ways so um and you see again it's not like you got to charge for the weekly recap but there are ways that we can integrate still earning in that you know like tiny said um when we were talking about it she said it doesn't take much energy from her so she's okay with having the crossword be something that's for free um because again that would just keep that engagement coming people oh going to look at the recap seeing what we have going on what tasks we need help with you know, actually maybe rewatching our stuff because they're passing by, they're seeing what we're doing in here, getting their word search, um, and that that's for free, you know, but oh, if we have something like NFTs and comics, you know, maybe you want to pay for that and buy that and actually have that there. So that's kind of going to be the um, next step in the raw recap that we're adding. I will be dropping that here after our community call. Um, I always try to do it after our community call so I can actually include any like tasks that we all set out uh, for what's available for this week and also include this recording. So that's it y'all. That's, that's the last thing I wanted to talk about was that uh, raw recap that we are juicing up a little bit to try to gain some more momentum uh, it's been really great we're up to 141 members so that workshop is what really kicked off a lot of momentum with people joining um especially a lot of people that have been joining and participating um i've also been in some pretty cool places lately being able to talk with cool people that are doing awesome things in the space 
and want to collaborate with Raw, as you guys have seen a lot of them hopping in here um, and getting active, you know, going through the channels, reading, replying, onboarding, um, you know, and actually wanting to build because our mission is becoming very, very, very exciting. Um, so, you know, the more we start to build out, the more we will start to attract. And that's why I just keep reminding people of all the awesome things we're doing. You know, that raw rec center by being able to rent that out, being able to advertise. Those are big things in Web 2 on why big businesses are big businesses. You know, so monitoring ourselves after people who are really successful and really doing things that make sense. You know, being able to, able to do that kind of stuff is going to, again, put us in position to take over the space in a way like a lot of people aren't. You know, we're not trying to come up and make marketplaces and um, come out with our own coins. You know, we're not looking at it just the traditional way a lot of people come into the space. We're not even trying to come in and make our own metaverse. You know, a lot of people come into the space and try to do those kind of things and that's why i start warning people like it's an energy pie if you come in thinking you're gonna start taking energy from these other marketplaces and these other meta uh, other metaverses you better be ready to fight because the people you're fighting against got a whole lot of money and a whole lot of time to run you down to the ground to make sure you don't succeed and make sure they're the only ones that do so we instead see that and put ourselves in a position to work with these new people work with these old people and do our own thing we'll be good and it, I, I know both of y'all still here and our book for the um grand book club this month is actually built to sell so you know just having those kind of con common thoughts on like again lining up our business in this way that um makes sense to investors and people that are in this web3 space and in this crypto space and see value in our project for the assets that we're building in the future that we're creating um and as being a partner again you know i'm not one of these people that's out here trying to tell everybody to take down the man like no this is the system let's create our part in it and how we can make it work well for everyone um and we've got some really awesome ways and avenues that we can do that. You know, it's just the mindset with making sure it's all done. Um, Sergio, you didn't really miss anything. I was just saying how we're using crossword puzzles. Um, Tiny is going to be making crossword puzzles um, each week. So like this week, the theme is Web3. And she used a bunch of definitions from like the workshop. And um, people can do that. The first 10 people to complete it get a po-op. Um, and then each week it'll be kind of the same. Like she's already worked on the one for next week. And the theme for that one will be metaverse because we're going into the metaverse this weekend. So again, it's like different questions about different metaverses and just a whole bunch of little fun stuff like that. And that is to help, again, gain that momentum within our weekly recap. Get people, you know, reading about what we're doing and excited to read our recaps on friday and excited to you know again start looking at raw as this resource to look for so that's all i have for today guys did anybody have any last questions thoughts or concerns about anything we've talked about so far nope okay awesome well this has been recorded so anybody listening please 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 drop your ideas in the ideas chat there were plenty 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 of things that um we put here that we all need to be thinking of ideas for um a quick review of that is collecting data on specific um collecting data on specific questions every quarter or, or okr um, so, you know, what kind of data do we want to be collecting each quarter? What do we want to be gauging our growth on? Um, and we all want to come up with some ideas on that. Um, what is, let me see, um, our next. Okay, I'm almost done, okay? Okay, go pot. Okay, um, ideas for our business of operations so those sops you know tiny says she's creating the milling note where we can start organizing all of our information and then actually just creating organized sops that can be 
reshared in our community, reshared with others, um, names for our actual initiative for this review, um, and kind of looking at Rotten Tomatoes on how we can really organize that, organize the mentors, the buyers, um, or what did, what did we group it to? Yeah, buyers and mentors and all that kind of stuff. And then what we want our metaverse to look like and kind of sharing university ideas. Um, and then we also have like a little to-do list. Oh no, it's all kind of the same thing. So yeah, so that's cool. Oh, oh, and our, that's what it was. Um, last thing for our ideas is everybody should be sharing a goal for what they would like to see accomplished each one of these quarters coming up. So I'm going to word all of this a lot better, but that was just kind of like to recap my little list here. Um, I'm not good at talking, typing, reading all at the same time. So that's why my list sounds a little all over the place. But once I retype it, I will be able to um, reword it exactly the best way to try to get some responses. So anything else anybody wants to add about what they would like to get accomplished this week um, or ask from the community? Any last thoughts, questions, concerns about anything? Nope. Awesome. Well, this has been a great chat, guys. Thanks for coming, sharing, um, and building. These meetings are definitely um, super helpful with how much we've grown this far and all the ideas that we come up with. Um, they really, really help us actually all be able to continue our own work in our own ways. So let's just keep building, keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we're growing and people are getting more and more excited. And um, I know the more people know about what we're doing, the um, you know more that we're just gonna continue to grow. So super excited. We also have our um, creator economy meeting on Sunday. I almost forgot about that one. So if you want to come actually create content together, we're gonna be meeting on Sunday. Um, the first like 15 to 20 minutes will just be us actually talking about raw content. Um, China will be there to talk about the Instagram. I'll be there talking about the Twitter um, and Twitch and YouTube. Tiny um, helps with the Facebook page because we do have a Facebook page and Zay helps with the Facebook page and the TikTok. So we are all going to have kind of like a quick session to make sure we all have simple things like the same at name. That's something we all have to kind of get down. Which at name is available for all these um, different social medias that we can all go with. All have the same bio. All, you know, get consistent with that kind of, um, you know, look when it comes to our DAO. As well as creating content. I put out a schedule with content. I think we should try to be consistent with sharing every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, I think that's like a good gauge to ask people to try to share consistently um, and share the kind of the same things on different platforms um, and you can share it in your own way but we want the same kind of things being shared so um, and I won't go into this too 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 much but if you guys see in the core team here I shared like a little picture and it says Monday Wednesday Friday and random so on Mondays, we'll be sharing like the weekly task available, maybe, you know, resharing the video on how to use the task box. We'll post advertising for our workshop coming up. And we always want to be sharing NFTs. That's one of the biggest things. So I was reading one of these um, like marketing gurus on Twitter, like threads or whatever. One of the things they were saying is make sure you are sharing art because people that are in this space half of them are only and not even half like more than half of them are literally only following because of the art right because you're in this nft space and they're buying off of if they like this art or if they don't like this art and then it comes into utility so our education is great we are always going to post those that educational content but we want to also make sure we're posting nfts you know because that's how we're actually putting this stuff out there so that will be on mondays wednesdays we'll be posting resources like definitions and how to very like easy slides with um like 
when I was talking to China, she said like how to create a DAO, slide over, step one, slide over, step two, simple things like that. I let her know Tiny's been kind of working on creating like this whole dictionary for us basically. Like every time we get a new term, she's like adding it to that. So just simple things like that, you know, having a word and its definition under it, you know, but Wednesday is about posting those resources, reposting news articles, you know, even the ones shared here in the Discord or online or wherever you're getting um you know some type of news reposted though and again then someone's nft friday remind us for our community call or maybe a snippet from our, our community call one of the biggest things i was telling china um because she was saying how our first um like dive into the metaverse there'll be a lot of content she can repost and i'm like yeah honestly everything we do every single week has so much content that can be reposted our talks on twitter our talks in moms and crypto our talks here in the community call you know anytime we're getting together and actually having these conversations and pushing people to drop gems and finding cool little like a reel is only about 60 seconds you know so if somebody says something that just was like "Ooh, that was such a great way to say that it could be 30 seconds 15 seconds you know just grab that snippet and share it so that people are hearing what we're talking about seeing what we're doing and wanting to come get involved um posting our raw thread or the raw recap um and then again someone's nft Randomly, we can share those um, new member bios, um, things we're working on. Um, and then also, again, just reminding people our focus is education, networking, and physical to digital. So our content should be reflecting this. We should be posting educational content all the, all the time. We should be sharing our networking events all the time. And we should be showing how we're going physical to digital all the time. Um, then if we start getting in a habit of posting this educational um, content, sharing our networking events, and showing people how we're going physical to digital, it'll start to feel like we're having to say a lot less as we're trying to tell people about what we're doing because they can actually go and see what we're doing, you know, and it starts to become more relevant and evident to just everybody. Um, so just a little recap so on sunday um the plan will be to actually just have a quick discussion with all of those um, raw content creators talking about that um tiny again create a, some really cool checklists with things you want to see when you're creating content um we had like a little millinote mood board where we were sharing like our color themes and like background and how we kind of want social media to look so we're going to continue to do that but the really fun part after we've had a discussion and we've talked about you know what we want to create the content for the goal is to have this content creation party every single sunday um one of the things you'll see is content creators <clears throat> you know you go pay for one of these master classes on how to be some influencer they're going to tell you to what botch create your content plan out your content you know what if that's not for the whole month then at least it needs to be done for that first week you know and that's at a bare minimum so that your week content is planned out your caption is planned out your hashtags is planned out and if we spend sundays to come together talk about our content and create that content together it will be a lot easier for you throughout the week to just go share the content post the content so that's the goal with that is to continue to do that every sunday um, and the reason why we call it a jam session is because we're also going to use our um, new music bot that Zay put in there. So we will have this conversation in the jam session. And then once we actually go into content creating um, and everybody kind of mutes themselves and starts creating their templates and their posts that they're going to um, be creating for the week. Um, everybody at that point can actually go into the music chat, this raw music playlist, and start sharing. So Zan and I have tested this bot. It's so cool. All you have to do is press star, play, and then type the name of the song. You literally don't need to drop any links, do anything else. Um, you can skip the songs, but it does require like everybody to vote to skip the song, I think, for it to actually skip. Uh, which was really cool that we can all kind of you know just add songs right there it doesn't have to be anything like 
pre-created is you know anybody that's actually a part of this session can just add a song to the session and it can be very open um and we can just keep the jam session going you know as long as as long as as the playlist goes you know but just creating that environment for people to come on sundays create content for their week get their week planned out their week together goals set all that kind of good stuff and um you know just have that be one of those pillars again with networking and um, getting that creator economy rolling, you know, we, we, we know a few little things about, uh, the, the creator content and how to be successful. So, you know, sharing those tips and actually applying them. Um, so very excited about that. I, I know I ended up actually talking about one more thing when I said nothing else, but <laughs> so did anybody have any last questions or thoughts about the content party or anything else we've talked about today? no all right well that's it for real guys thank you all for listening again share your ideas in the chat and we'll be back soon peace